What's going on guys? This is Tony with Urban Girl Scout Media, living the dream as always, and coming to you today to talk about the last week of developments in regards to The Last Dance, the documentary about Michael Jordan, the Chicago Bulls, and the last run they had uh, for that sixth championship. So, <clears throat> I'm not here to talk about Jordan versus LeBron. I'm not here to talk about players of different eras. I'm not here to talk about anything other than uh, here on this glorious Saturday in May, um, Horace Grant and Scottie Pippen. So within the past week, both of these guys who were the uh, second and third most important players, and I'm not saying that's a dimension. I'm saying they were second and third on the 91, 92, 93 championship teams, uh, they've come out <clears throat> and they've had some some issues with the way they were portrayed in The Last Dance. Um, and I think both of them have interesting insights that we need to discuss. Let's start with Horace Grant. Um, he brought up a really good point about how if everyone believes that he's the one that went to Sam Smith and he's a snitch, why are we snitching on guys who are doing coke and weed Jordan's rookie year? He brought up a few things there that I think if it was person versus person, not person versus Jordan, we would look at it differently. Um, Grant, Horace Grant's in a, a no-win situation here. He's not, unless he has some like damning rock-solid proof that's going to bury Michael Jordan, he ain't winning that conversation. But I thought it was interesting that he brought up, you know, he's talking about me snitching on him, Grant swearing up and down it's not him, um, from the Sam Smith, Jordan Rules book. I, it, that's a whole nother story, but I, I thought that his point was very interesting that we're worried about people snitching, but Jordan's bringing up stuff from the past that some of that just did not need to be brought up. And I, I agree, but I think it also adds to the um, to the story. So it, it's a lose-lose. He also brought up some of the conflict and some of the, the facts that Jordan was maybe not 100% true or honest in this documentary. And I, to that, I say, shocker, in a very sarcastic voice. Uh, if you don't know that Michael Jordan has a huge ego, he's incredibly competitive, and he got the basically the final say on this documentary... I don't know what you expected. Like, if you knew those things going into this, I don't know what you expected. Anybody that had anything he could use against them from that time period, he was going to use against them. That is who Michael Jordan is. I'm not saying that as a negative. I'm pointing out history shows that Michael doesn't forget and Michael will do what he believes is right. And he believes he did it the right way. <clears throat> so let's move on to Scottie Pippen. The greatest number two ever. I mean, there, there's no doubt about it. Um, one of the best players of all time. And he's not happy with the way that he's portrayed in this document. I, I don't know what to say for Scottie Pippen. He, he's on the record delaying surgery to hurt the team. Upset about his contract. Sitting out of the final few seconds of games. He had a reputation that I, in Chicago, when I was under the age of 13, knew about it. That he was no tipping, Pippin. Go look that up. That was a well-known, before social media, well-known reputation. I love Scottie Pippen. He's one of my 10, 15 favorite players of all time. I've met him. Granted, I was a kid, but I still met him. And I adore what he did for the Chicago Bulls. Because Michael Jordan doesn't win those titles without Scottie Pippen. He needed someone to be that number two, but be that great of a player with him in that time. That's the truth. You can't do it alone. But Scottie also had the chance to come out and say that he would have done some of that shit differently. And just like with Isaiah Thomas and the bad boy Pistons on that infamous handshake, he didn't backtrack. And you could say, well, he's being honest, Tony. He's being real to himself. That's fine, but then you can't be upset with how people react to it. If you're going to be honest to yourself and put that out there, you have to be prepared for how people are going to reply. And that's just my opinion. 
I'm not foolish enough to believe that Michael Jordan didn't maybe embellish a little bit of this whole documentary. I'm not foolish enough to believe that there are things there to paint other players in a negative light. And I'm not foolish enough to believe that Michael never did anything that if we saw more behind the scenes footage, we wouldn't be a little upset about. But it's time for all of us to understand something. There is a mythology and a legacy around Michael Jordan that at this point is so impenetrable that even when his second and third players from a championship team come out and say some of the things that these guys have, it doesn't really change much for us. Michael Jordan will go down as one of the best basketball players of all time, and he will go down as arguably the most popular American athlete of all time. But the one thing that we have to remember as we walk away from the last dance, as we get ready to move on to the next sports story, whatever it may be, is that Michael Jordan, in today's society, would not be loved the way he was in the 90s. He'd be considered an example of toxic masculinity. That ultra-competitive, smack-talking, insulting, he would be that example of a very negative sports athlete. And I'm not going either way on it if I think it's, it's right or wrong, because Tom Brady has a reputation to be a bit of an asshole at times. Peyton Manning, bit of an asshole at times. <clears throat> LeBron James, he has, he has uh, teammates that will tell you he was a bit of an asshole. Greatness comes with an edge. Kobe Bryant, bit of an asshole. Greatness comes with an edge. I don't think there's anything that will happen that is going to change the way we see Michael Jordan, at least nothing from the 90s. The mythology, the legacy, it's, it's too protected. Hell, you could just take the Nike piece and say how much they've protected him. And I love Michael Jordan. But it's, it's foolish of us as a society to pretend that he was some perfect, above reproach human being. He threw away a friendship with Charles Barkley, never forgot about a handshake, has held on to the Horace Grant and Scottie Pippen stuff for years, doesn't have any affiliation with Sports Illustrated because of what they did back in the day when he was playing baseball. He does not forget. He holds grudges. He's a, he's a human, and I think that, more than anything, is important walking away from this. Is that you guys have to realize... The mythology around Michael Jordan makes it seem like he was this Superman. He is not. He is human. And that, to me, is why guys like Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, that's why, to me, those guys are heroes. Because they have all this greatness that they accomplished, but they also have this negative dark side of, well, shit happens. They're real people. I imagine in the following days, weeks, maybe even months, we'll have more players coming out talking. We'll have more people coming out discussing what uh, what they say really happened back then. We're never going to know the full truth. A lot of this is going to be subjective, but it's important to remember as you watch, rewatch, discuss, analyze, think about when you do anything with that documentary and the team itself, you just have to remember it was a different world. And sometimes greatness comes at a price. I'm not saying that it's it's necessarily the right price, but they did win six titles. That is what I got, guys. Kind of an interesting topic. Kind of a, a weird one. I feel like I'm I'm dancing this line of saying Michael Jordan was a douchebag to his teammates. And while there is truth to that, he also elevated uh, them just as much as they elevated him. Like it was, it was, it's a very unique thing. Like you, you can't be upset 25, 30 years later when you've got championship rings to show for it. Um, and if you have the opportunity to walk some of that back, Scotty Pippen, I, I think you, you at least do it if you're worried about what your image is going to be. 
Same with Isaiah Thomas. I think if you if you're that worried, you walk it back. I do want to point out that one person who they did not get the most positive uh, stuff put out about them either, but I haven't heard them come out and, and cry, is Dennis Rodman. Remember, Dennis Rodman was with the Bad Boy Pistons, had a few moments in this documentary where Jordan had to do this or do that to keep his ass in line, and he was in Vegas, and he was that, and he left a finals game. Dennis Rodman has not come out once that I've seen and complained. And he was the Horace Grant on that third, or on that second three-peat team. So, you kind of have to see it from that perspective. What about Tony Kukoc? He was, you know, another big piece of that second three-peat team. He hasn't come out and complained. He, I feel like Tony Kukoc has had the right to rip into Michael and Scotty for a long time. And that's another day, another story. But I believe that he has every right to come out and rip both those guys a new asshole for the way they treated him. Both before his time with the Bulls and during it. Neither of those two guys came out. But Scotty, who made bad decisions, has come out. Horace, who... And the other thing is, this story about Jordan taking Grant's food and whatnot when he had bad games, and now Horace said that he clapped back at Jordan and yada yada. I would love to see that. I'm not citing anybody. I would just love to see how Michael Jordan would deal with a young Horace Grant clapping back at him about don't take my fucking food. Because that's what Horace claims happened. Michael doesn't want to discuss that piece. We don't know. I mean, it's just fascinating. There you go, guys. That's my Chicago Bulls. A uh, week after the documentary is finished, I can finally put some context to what some of these players are saying. I enjoyed it. I did not... Um, Expect to see so much behind the scenes footage that I just never really knew existed. I definitely will be watching everything again and I look forward to, you know, maybe seeing some things I didn't catch the first time as I haven't had a chance to watch every episode from start to finish. I've had to kind of miss a few moments here and there. But the main stuff is the main stuff. It's been fascinating. Thank you guys so much. My name is Tony K. This is Urban Girl Scout Media. Living the dream as always.